still working on an intro, but today, boys, we are going to be going over Radical Red version 2.2 and how to navigate the early game in a hardcore Nuzlocke. Now, 2.2 just came out and it is significantly more difficult than 2.1. So without further ado, and not to waste your time, let's hop right into the action. gonna make let's just refresh the hardcore nuzlocke rules for maybe people that won't know so hardcore nuzlocke rules you can only catch the first pokemon on each route or area and just like your taxes there is workarounds for this secondly if a pokemon dies it must be released and then you have to play in set mode and no in-game healing items and then you cannot out level the gym leader's top Pokemon. And the last three of those are kind of built into Radical Red automatically. So there shouldn't be anything you have to change settings wise to get those rules to work. Just something to note. So two, one, I loved going Bulbasaur because the early game was a little more now. You can navigate the early game a little easier. And then Venusaur with Mega Venusaur Thick Fat late game was very nice. But I personally think for 2-2, two, two, after looking at the trainer's Pokemon, I think Squirtle is your best bet. But if you are a more experienced Nuzlocke and you think you can navigate Bulbasaur, I think Bulbasaur is probably the better Pokemon down the road. But for this run, we're going to pick Squirtle. I think Squirtle is makes the early game here as Faulkner and Brock a little bit easier than Bulbasaur does. So we'll go with Squirtle. Defeated your dumbass rival. You've given the parcel to Professor Oak. You'll get your Pokeballs and it's time to get your first encounter. One thing to note in Radical Red, your po and I think most Pokemon games, your encounters during the day are actually different to the night. And as you can see, the graphic appears on the screen. You can see in red which Pokemon are different on day and night. Now, for Route 1, I would probably recommend the nighttime encounters and encounters. And I mean, none of them are like you really, really want, but I really do like to go for the nighttime encounters because I love the possibility of Poochiana or Zigzagoon G. I think the dark typing is super helpful for fights like Misty and Archer and Mount Moon. So I like to strive for the dark, the dark typing. I mean, if you could get a Starly and Bidoof, I actually think both of those are really solid counters and they're available at bulk. I'm gonna go with the nighttime one, but if you wanna go with the daytime, just switch your system clock. So our encounter, and it's G Zigzagoon. Insane encounter early. It's like a 4% encounter rate and it's a super, super good Pokemon. So we get our G Zigzagoon. So oh, recently added in patch 2-2, if you talk to this guy right here, he will give you a fishing rod. And now this is actually very, 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 very important as you would actually delay encounters later in the game to make sure you got a chin chow. And now you have a 70% chance fishing in this pond right here to get a chin chow, and then you have a 30% chance to get a slow poke. Chin chow is actually probably the better mon just because it's going to have volt absorb for the Molga. And then it opens up an encounter later in the game with auto know there's a lot of good encounters at the one route that you would normally get your guaranteed chin chow. So we get our chin chow, perfect. This is going to be super helpful for Brock, super helpful for Faulkner. Back, after you catch your chin chow, go in here, talk to this kid, and you get wise glasses. And these increase your special attack, but I actually, 90% of the time, I end up selling these, and we'll talk about that later. Our third encounter, our Route 22 encounter. And the daytime encounter, I think here, is probably more so what you want to go for, just because the 20% Wulu. Wulu's kind of pretty damn freaking good um i think the daytime encounter is probably ideal but also if you really want to play for the five percent and four percent rookity i think that's also a super good viable option um rookity is insane i mean mostly here you're i think Mankey is also actually a decent encounter for brock but i i actually play for the nighttime encounter i think i'd recommend maybe playing for daytime just because wulu's really like high high encounter rate and wulu's pretty insane but I'm gonna go for nighttime. I just like to play for the Rookity. Keep it on nighttime. Hey, I'm too lazy to change my system clock, but it's just a note to you guys. We actually get Sand True, which is actually not bad. This will really help us against uh, a Molga. Professor Oak's A, he gives you five Orin Berries. I definitely would just equip these before your big Faulkner fight would be the first time I equip them. I don't think there's anything really you need to worry about before then. We're gonna get our Route 2 encounter here. I prefer anything that we can get the electric typing. Um. 
I think Poochiana at 20% at night is a super good encounter. Um, how I like, I, I really do like night here. I like Houndor. I like Silly Cobra's okay. Fanpy's pretty, Fanpy's a bolt, but I, I, I mainly play for the Poochiana just to get Intimidate um, on Mighty Anna when we get them. So, but I mean, any Shinx and Mareep also very, very good encounters here. Oddish, Oddish is actually not bad at all. Nighttime encounter a lot here. I think getting Dust Tox who learns Toxic at 15 is super, super underrated especially for brock and being able to toxic stall we get a sawaddle which i've actually never got this before as an encounter so now we have our first rival fight which like i said they moved right to this cutout right here so just something to note it used to be at the end of the forest so if you're coming from 2-1 to 2-2 two, two, just something to be wary of make sure you're not cut off guard really you only need two two pokemon for this usually i would say i would he has a corp fish and he has a trico if you have a water type and you have a bug either a a bug type you got from viridian or anything a flying type you got early game like starly or even rookity i think this this fight is really nothing to stress about um since i have the bug type we will just go right into bug bite and we should be good easy enough easy fight you that's nothing to worry about on that fight and he also gives you the xp share so if you do not want to sit there and train all of your Pokemon before this fight, train up two Pokemon, and then after you get the XP share, then you could really start grinding. Some people play with rare candies. We got our, we beat Brendan. We got our XP share. I recommend fighting these trainers. They're all pretty much pushovers. There's nothing you really need to worry about in here, but getting this money is actually very nice for the possible for when you need to buy the egg coming up. And I'll just show you what I sort of mean when we get to that point. But I sort of recommend these trainers are literally, there's no one you need to worry about. If you have a flying type, you can just sweep all of them with flying types. But I'd recommend fighting all of them just to get the XP. It's They're super easy fights. So getting the XP and then also getting the money from the trainers is something that's probably pretty helpful. Through Viridian Forest. Now this is where picking up those wise glasses earlier are actually very helpful. Cause if you do not have, I used to say you didn't have to get this egg before Faulkner. Cause if you had an electric type, you could literally just sweep Faulkner. Now with the Amolga there, you can't just run through and sweep. So I think seeing what you get from this egg is very beneficial as it could possibly save you from having to sack anything so what you're gonna do is you just sell the wise glasses here unless you just have an insane Faulkner team I would recommend selling the wise glasses and getting the egg from Faulkner so you sell the wise glasses here I have I have infinite money on just for since I'm just running through the game like kind of half you sell the wise glasses you have five thousand dollars you have enough money in my case I have infinite money on just because I don't want to spend here grinding because it's just for like teaching purposes and stuff like that but you're gonna get your egg and then like i said earlier that you can sort of manipulate where you get your encounters the encounter is based on where it says the pokemon's from so what we're going to do is we're going to stay in pewter city and just hatch and just hatch the egg in pewter city it's going on something to note earlier in the game you get the fishing rod and you catch the chinchow you could also go back to pewter city and get a fishing encounter but however i like to save it i like to save that encounter for when i get an old a good rod and then i could catch barboach just because wish cash is super useful in multiple fights later in the game i think it's worth saving that encounter but if that is an encounter you want to get there's a 70 percent tentacle which is a pretty good pokemon that would be make brock probably a lot easier so it really is your call me personally i think delaying the pewter city encounter for when you get the good rod is probably the better route but it is your call at the end of the day hopefully we get something that helps us for faulkner we get a Feebas. i mean it's not going to help us much now but this could help us later so we're just going to box that and move on with our day so it is time for the first i would say very big challenge in this game and that is faulkner now i put faulkner's team on the screen i would recommend getting all your pokemon here to level 13. now in 2-1 you could literally just sweep faulkner with whatever electric type you had at the time it was a very easy fight if you had an electric type if you didn't it was a little more challenging but it still wasn't that hard now you have to deal with a freaking amolga and damn is this thing annoying so the things to know about this amolga you can see on the screen, I put the Jodo, I put Faulkner's team right up on the screen. It has an Orenberry, it has Thundershock, Air Cutter, and Sleep Talk. A thing to note, it also has Lightning Rod. So do not try any electric type attacks. Faulkner will also loves to bait out Lightning Rods, and then so he'll switch in his Amolga to get that boost. So just something to note, just something to watch out for. 
my recommendation for this fight is if you do have Chin Chow, lead Chin Chow, take out the Wingle and one Shockwave. There's a possibility you get Water Pulse confused. It shouldn't be too big of a deal because you'll see why later when we swap in our Volt Absorb Chin Chow to get heals. So you'll sort of see that as we go along. I, or we're going to give all of our five Pokemon that don't have Oran Berries the Oran Berry to hold. This will restore 10 HP and be pretty helpful. So just something to note this fight can be very very annoying it really does depend on what encounters you get in 2-2 though i think it gives you the tools early game especially with the 70 percent chin chow to be able to beat falconer so we'll just kind of we'll kind of speed through this fight just to give you guys an idea of what you need to do so like i said wingle comes out right away you want a shock wave we don't get confused awesome that is pretty much hardly ever happens i feel like i get confused like every time i do this fight now here comes Amolga. This is definitely the most annoying Pokemon you're gonna face here. So my usual strategy for Amolga is I try I hit when it comes out, I try and hit a bubble. Occasionally, what he will do is swap out on your bubble to Corvus Squire, which is actually perfectly fine. So he's gonna want an air cutter here. So this is when you want to make sure you're swapping in and out. So we're gonna bring in Squirtle to wear the air cutter. Squirtle, I mean, takes a lot of damage there. It's perfectly fine. But with our Volt Absorb Chin Chow, we can swap back in. We get the Volt Absorb and then we can start hitting bubbles. So this is what I mean. He loves to withdraw and it is very annoying. But with Corvus Squire out here and us only having one electric type, I think we go for the Shockwave on this thing. It does a good amount of damage. He Rock Smashes again. We kill the Corvus Squire. I mean, we're, we're maybe dead to crit here. I'm just sort of showing you the general idea of a possible strategy. I did not even like strategize for this. But we're going to see an air cutter here. Um, I probably go to Sanshu on this air cutter. It does a little bit of damage. He goes, for, I would imagine he goes for another thing. We're actually going to hit an ice shard just to do a lot of damage. Perfect. And we're faster ice shard kills. Easy enough. That's why Alolan Sanshu is a pretty insane, a pretty insane encounter for this fight. So we beat Faulkner. He gives you roost. If you have any flying types, I think teaching that flying type roost right there is probably a perfect idea. Our good old friend, Brock. I think Brock is a pretty challenging fight. His team is up on the screen. Also, all this documentation linked below in the description. I highly recommend if you're going to Nuzlocke this game, you check out that documentation. Super helpful. It makes it lets you prep for fights and makes the game a whole lot easier on yourself. So Brock has a Lolan Geodude, a Vulpix and an Onyx. Now in 2-1, his Vulpix was a pushover and this fight wasn't as hard. In 2-2, this Vulpix is probably as hard as Pokemon because that moveset of HP, Grass, Ominous Wind and Incinerate that literally melts your berries is a very, very difficult task. My recommendation is if you do have Chin Chow, which you have a 70% of getting Chin Chow, Brock, so I think the key in this fight is drawing out Onyx second. Because if you draw Vulpix second, you will it will incinerate all your berries and your berries are useless. And I think berries for beating the Onyx at the end with how fast Onyx is, is very important. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to bubble. We know it's super effective, but we also know we're going to get the berry proc. And even with, and there's no speed drop, so we're fine. We outspeed. So we're dead to like nine out of 10 bulldoze rows, rolls here. And I think Aud this is where Oddish is a pretty insane encounter because Oddish can actually, with a, a Orenberry, pretty much one-on-one -on -one this Onyx because of how much health it gets back on the Absorb. And then by the end of this, we have a full health Oddish. So perfect. We've taken out the first two Pokemon without a worry. I don't think Onyx and Geodude are anything that's super difficult. I think this Vulpix is what you really, really, really need to be planning for. So... Vulpix here, it sees Incinerate. And this is where Chinchow is also a very, very important Pokemon to us. Just because we want to hit a T-Wave here. And why do we want to hit a T-Wave? Because we really, really need to be faster than this Vulpix. And this Vulpix is super fast. So we know we're not dead to HP Grass unless it crits. At this stage, it could be its most likely random move. So I would recommend switching to your Pokemon that you don't mind, you mind losing the least. You don't mind losing the least. I don't know. In this case, for me, it's Sawaddle. We actually get a Paralysis here, which is super ideal, but we also know we're dead to Incinerate Crit, and we have an Incinerate coming. So what we're going to do actually here is we're going to go to Squirtle, 
and then we're gonna get off a bubble since we're faster and we actually get a paralysis this is also why paralysis is super huge here just because of how much that like rng aspect of it can really help you here so we're faster and we just win with zigzagoon so i think your main strat like guys i'm not i know i'm not playing these fights like perfectly i didn't like spend like a super amount of time but i think a good strategy is you want to draw the the main points i think for brock are you want to draw onyx second so if you do have that water type or like the chin in my case most cases you'll probably have a chin chow i think using chin chow is probably your best case because Chin Chao will be able to take Geodude and then swap into a Pokemon that you know can 1v1 Onyx, whether it be your Squirtle, whether it be like a water type you got from the egg, or if you even got the Tentacruel or something like that, that would be an awesome option here to take out the Onyx. And then for Vulpix, like I said, you kind of have to finesse. Um, I think with Chin Chao, T-waving Vulpix is probably the best thing you can do with Chin Chao, and that will give you the easiest path and most likely win condition that you keep all six Pokemon leaving Brock. We beat Brock, we have our first badge, we haven't lost any Pokemon, and that is sort of the navigating the early game for Radical Red. Thank you guys so much for watching. We got through Brock, Deathless, which is always good. Um, I The point of this video, I guess, wasn't necessarily to show you the most perfect strats for beating Brock and beating Faulkner, but it was to give you an idea of some strat ideas that you can use and implement to whatever team you may get. I can't like perfectly predict what team you can get, but like I said, there's high probability you get Chin Chao, which is a super useful Pokemon for both fights. So stuff like that is the stuff I'd love for you guys to take away from this video. I linked the Radical Red documentation in the description below. I would highly recommend checking it out if you're going to play this game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to drop a like, drop a comment, and any feedback for future videos. We're going to probably do a part two with Misty coming up soon. So like I said, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you later.